Our topic today will be entitled Faith, Hope and Love. And it's titled that way, but we'll begin from the back. Love. So, as it described in the dictionary, love is known as a very strong feeling of linking and caring for somebody or something. And today, the verse that will assist me in this is John 3.16 or Joshua 1.5. So, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have an everlasting life. So, this shows that God loves us, no matter what we do. For in Joshua 1.5, he says, <coughs> Joshua 1.5, he says, No man shall be able to stand before you. I will not fail you, as I was with Moses. So, no matter what comes, so, no matter what comes in front of us, remember this Joshua 1.5 to help us. <coughs> Pardon. So, no matter what comes in front of us, remember there is a verse that will help us overcome the situation and the obstacle above it. <coughs> the conclusion is, take Joshua 1.5, but don't take God telling Joshua. Take as if God is telling you, God is telling you that Joshua 1.5. So that's my conclusion. And the second will be hope. Hope is described as to want something to happen and think that it is possible. So the verse that will assist me is Second Kings. In the story of Hezekiah, when the king of Assyria attacked the kingdom of Judah, and told Ezekiah to back down his kingdom. But Ezekiah didn't back down his kingdom. But he took a sackcloth, went into the feet of the Lord, took the letter to, that was given by the messengers, and told God, the king of Assyria is mocking you. Help me. In the night of that day, God sent an angel that killed all, all the soldiers of Assyria. And the king went home barefooted when he came with the chariots, and soldiers. So you'll have to know that hope is something that it is in you. You are the one who has to exploit it and release it. As in the book of Kings, there are four lep people suffering from leprosy. They were chased out of the kingdom of Israel, but they told themselves, let's not stay here. Let's go back to the kingdom of Israel. For the soldiers who are there, they will chase us, but let us still go. As they went, they found that God, God chased all the soldiers and all their belongings was there. They ate and said, it's not good to eat only. Let's go call our fellow, fellow brothers so we could share with them. You'll have to know, at this state, you are Hezekiah. And the king of Assyria and his men are all the troubles that you experience in your life. May it be academically, financially, sickness or everything. But do not worry. Don't be in despair. For God has said, for in John 3.16 said, he loves us all, Lord. So, when you're in that state, go unto the feet of the Lord, pray, and it shall come back. It's not a must that you remove an offering. You yourself are an offering. Sila zima ukome toa sadaka. But you coming here, despite the floods and the rain, you are still an offering towards the, towards the Lord. And you should also know that Hope is always there with you. Like the four people suffering from leprosy. They knew there were soldiers, but they just went. They kept on going towards the soldiers. It's not that they knew that God will chase away the soldiers, but it's their hope. They just said, let's go. That's how you should be in life. Try to do something. Don't just sit there. Most of us I know, to get kuna floods, we could have not come. 
Yes. That's true. But some of us knew and they still came. Another pastor. Another example to describe hope is Job. Job loved God with all his heart. But when Satan came, he told God, Job loves you because you have given him all the wealth he has. God told him, take it but not injure him. He took all his sons and all his wealth. But Job, despite all of this, he still prayed to God. He used to go at the feet of God praying. His wife used to tell him, just curse God and die. But he said to him, you speak like the other foolish women will speak. And, and, Job, and Job never cast God or sinned within his lips. Despite his wife and all his friends telling him, cast God and die. He still had faith in God and hoped that God will help him one day. Yes. My conclusion for today about hope is simple. Just do whatever you do. Don't be afraid and just still do it. Have God to help you. Don't forget wherever you go. And do everything waiting for God to help you. And faith. Faith. Is known as trust in somebody's ability or knowledge. Or trust that somebody will do something that has, pro has promised. And now, my example, I have many examples in this part. I have Job and Daniel. Uh, sorry, sorry. I have Job. So, Job, as I've said earlier, believed in God for everything. Prayed him until Satan came. His friends told him to curse, but he refused. Satan made boils from the crown of his head to the tail of his feet. But he never stopped praying to God. He never stopped worshipping God. He had his faith towards God that everything will be bad. And he told his wife, while everything that has good also has bad, why praise him in the time we are good? But the time of evil, we curse him. And that also should be implemented in our life. Most of us in the time of need is, the, is when they remember there's someone known as God. But the time they acquire what they want, they forget the name and forget him. Till the day they'll suffer again to remember there's someone known as God in their life. And so, Daniel also had faith in God. With King Darius made a decree that no one should worship God. Daniel loved God with all his heart and could not betray him. He had faith that he'll protect him, praying three times a day. And still, the president and the other officials were jealous of Daniel. They could search for a mistake, but they could never find a single mistake against Daniel. But when they realized he still worshipped God, they sent him to King Darius and was sent in the den of lions. And so, when, when he was sent in the den of lions, God protected him. King Darius asked, has your God protected you? He said, God sent an angel and shut the lion's mouth. And I'll go back to my theme verse, which is Joshua 1.5. So, when he protected him in verse 6, he said, be courageous. And he was courageous that God will protect him. And will protect him. And those who go against him shall be punished. All the presidents and the officials who reported Daniel, all were sent into the den of lions with their families. And all were killed. Same to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When King Nebuchadnezzar made an idol for worship, he said everybody to worship. But he never worshipped. They never worshipped. They were sent into uh, fairness, which was burning seven times. 
than that of a normal fire. They were sent, but no one died. And when they were sent, he saw a third person. For God said, in the midst, when you come to pray, to worship me, I shall be with you. For a church is not the building, but a church is the people, the people who worship God there. Nebuchadnezzar surprised, he said he saw a fourth man. And God made him eat grass like a cow. And so I want to tell you, God loves us despite of what we face in our normal occasions. Have hope and faith. And love is a very strong feeling, as I've said earlier. God loves us. And we should all know that we should love God with all our hearts. As he has loved many people in Israel, throughout the stories, you can pick a verse, a story of a particular person. Example I have given as Hezekiah. He loved him and he protected him from king of Assyria. And faith doesn't come in a single manner. You know, faith without action is dead. And I would like to give an example with our host here. When, when, when the Lord told Prophet Eric to begin a church, he might be facing challenges before he built, like the materials, the land. But there's this thing that says, sexually saying, Chenye Mungu andikacho hakifutiki. If he told him to begin a church, despite the challenges, it will still come here. And we are all here listening to the word of Lord today. And and you know, they still had hope of building it. As one day Pastor Anne said, that Prophet Eric told him, when the first lorry coming, carrying materials, it will never stop until it's completed and they'll acquire followers. And it happened. And you know, they had faith that they'll get followers to preach the word of Christ. But also, faith without action is dead. And so, they, spread, they sent evangelists. I remember, Chatoto is the one who introduced me to this church, actually. He's also with Chajon. So, they had faith and they also acted upon it. You have faith, but you are just there. Where am I? Pick a chai. Just saying, I'm going to a Pick a chai, lala, pick a supper. It can't work like that. Working day in, day out. For God says, God helps those who help. God help those who help themselves. After 50%, He'll give you the extra 50. I ask you to take 10 and you meet after 0. You must work so that he can boost you to a higher level. As we are here, we started with a few followers, but the church has grown. We are praying for a bigger land and many followers. And you also know that this church is for everybody. For I remember my parents used to ask me, what's the name of your church? I'm telling them, HSDPM, they are telling me, can you say a abbreviation in a form sentence? And here they are. So, <laughs> and so you see, my mother comes every Sunday and you are part of the church as well. The children have grown. So, our host here had faith and a leader leads by example. We were ni nani usi lead by example. Usi fuate steps of our host over here. Why don't you experience faith, hope and love will come towards God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate the servant of God. Amen. 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 Thank you. Don't forget my coffee. Amen. 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 I know there are some of us who are challenged 
And I don't know, maybe do you ask yourself and think about it, that at his age, he has the boldness and confidence to stand here and share the word. Maybe you are seated there and you are wondering, eh, even where I am today and the many years that I have lived, I don't have the boldness to stand. But this is the beauty of knowing the God that you serve. This is the beauty of having the confidence in the God that you serve. Being that you know who your God is. The kids have just presented here and told us about the love of God. Him that who sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ. And now today we are being reminded about hope. We are being reminded about love. We are being reminded about faith. And as you were sharing, one of the interesting things that kept on ringing in my mind is that I was, I've just remembered around three stories. One of them we see Esther. Esther gets to the point that he tells the, the, the maids and even the, the other Jewish uh, followers. And he told them, I'm going to go to the king's palace. If I perish, I perish. If I live, I live. The men in the, the four leprous men um, in Second Kings, they are still getting to the same space and they are like, if we remain here, we are going to die. If we go back there, we are still going to die. If we go to the enemy's camp, we are still going to die. So for them, like, it's everything, they are laying it down. They are like, now we are going to go to the enemy's camp. If they give us food, well and good. If they finish us, either way, we are, we are to die. Like, they have put everything down and they are focusing on the goal that they are going to. There is that point of faith. Because at some point, if you read there, at some point, they are like, they might. We are not so sure that they are, they are going to give us food. But they might have mercy on us and give us food. And they stepped out. And get to understand that this nation was saved because of these four lepros. They were already dying in anger because they, are, they were already locked. But these guys stepped out. And once things were turned around for them, they went back. They remembered to go back and fish the others and they were like, come, there is food for us. The enemies have run away. I think there's one more story that I was remembering and they were like, if we die, we die. If you are going to perish, you are going to perish. And this is the point that I was just thinking about. What really, what does the word hope mean? A feeling of expectation and a desire for a particular thing to happen. And when you read in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, I would love to read that verse because that describes unto us what really faith is. Because as I was reading that verse, it kept on feeling like it has all these three components within them. That there is so much power in faith. There is so much power in what uh, our minister today was sharing to us challenging us and pushing us to step out of the comfort zone of having faith and you're not taking any action. Because faith with no action is dead. That's what the word of God reminds us this morning. If you don't make that step of faith, if you don't take that step of moving forward, yes, you have faith about a particular thing, but if you just sit back and just think about it and you leave it there and you're praying, it will never move. If you're just praying in your home, praying for a job, and you're staying in indoors, trusting God for the job to come for you. It will never come. There must be that step of faith of you stepping out. And this is what the, uh, the, verse, uh, the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Now for faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's not just about things that you're hoping for. It's the substance. Like there's a, there's a step there's something that you're seeing. Because substance, I would want to relate it uh, with a bit of is it chemistry or biology that talks about matter. Things that occupy space. Substance. Like, it has, there has to be that step that you've taken. We are being reminded that even Jesus got into the garden of Gethsemane. And he was in that space whereby he felt that this was heavy. And he prays to the Father. He's like, Father, take away this car from me. Let it not be my will, but let your will be done. At that point, he had every reason to turn back and tell the father, uh -uh, I am not going through this. And one of the things that I keep on remembering and I keep on thinking to myself, that Jesus came and died on that cross. Yet, him being the son of God, he knew so well. The same people that he was dying to, for, they were going to kill him. They are the same people who are going to crucify him. They were the same people who are going to deny him. They were the same people who are going to keep on causing him pain each and every day. But still, in spite of all that and despite of all those things, he still died for them. He still died for us. Knowing so well that we are still going to sin against him. 
I think at times I, I, when I'm, I step out for evangelism, I still share to people and tell them, imagine Jesus is not shocked when you sin. It's not a shock. He's not a surprise. It doesn't shock him. He already knows. And that's why he gave us an opportunity to come back to him in repentance. Because why is then do we have repentance? If he knew so well that you are not going to sin. In fact, he says, all of us are fallen short of his glory. This is something that he's aware of. But that doesn't give us the leeway for us to keep on going back to sin because he knows. No. It gives us that opportunity to turn back to him and cry for mercy. He has given, that he has given us that opportunity to come back to him and just tell him, Father, we have sinned against you, but we love you and we want to become more like you. Today, the children are reminding us of the love of Christ over our lives. He did not, he's not waiting on us to be good so that he can come and save us. No. They sang a song here that talks about Yeshua. I know most of us, we sing and just talk about Yeshua, but do we really know the meaning of the word Yeshua? It talks about a deliverer. He came to deliver us from the chains of sin. When you read through John 17, it talks about Jesus praying unto us, praying for his disciples, praying for me and you. That's how much he loves us. Even after dying on the cross for me and you, he still went back and prayed for me and you. And he tells the Father, I know they're in the world. And they're going to experience so much in this world. And I'm not praying that you take them away out of this land. No, he did not pray for us to come out of this world. But he prayed for us to win over every trouble of this world. Victory is assured in your life. His love has been assured in your life. He sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to come and die for you. And imagine, even after dying, he made it so easy. You don't have to travel all the way to Jerusalem and look for where Jesus was buried or look for the mountain of Golgotha where he was crucified. You don't have to do all that. Imagine you don't have to do all manner of sarcastic things and be like, now I have you to give what goats, what offering for me to be loved by him. John 3.16 for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son. That whomsoever. Not some specific ones. Not the good ones. Not those who have decided that he, oh, that he, I am good. I have, I have done this good. Now I can come, to, come back to him. No. He gave his life for us. Whomsoever believes. That's all we require. Whomsoever believes shall not perish. Shall not perish. That's your only leeway for your salvation, for you not to perish, for you not to be lost in this world, for you not, we are in a season whereby we are talking about the end time battles. The devil already knows his judgment. He knows where he's headed. But for you, you have the chance. You have the opportunity to turn back to him. He has given you the chance for you to go and dine with him in heaven. He has given you the chance for you to be with him and live for him. That is what the children are reminding us this day. That is what the word of God is reminding us this day. And he has reminded us one of the things that the kids died, uh, uh, acted for us here is that the greatest, it was a conversation that was having among us the disciples. Who is the greatest? It's not about, now you might be thinking and saying that those who sit here in front, they are the greatest. No. Or maybe you are thinking the usher or that person who does one, two, three is the greatest. Or maybe because they are the, the praise and worship sing here, so they are going to be the greatest. No. Jesus tells the disciples, the greatest amongst you is like the one who is a child, who is going to serve others. Who is going to serve others? Having the servant heart, that is what Christ is reminding us this day. That you that has chosen to serve God, you that has chosen to serve others, you are the greatest in his kingdom. So even as, as, as we wrap up the service, even as we conclude the service, I just want you to seek and think through your heart. Maybe you are here, you are not born again. Maybe you are here, you have not given your life to Jesus Christ. This is an opportunity for you. He has made it so easy for you that all that you need to do is just to believe. And in Romans, I think Romans 10, 9, it says, that the, the way to salvation and if you, the only way for you to get saved is just for you to confess with your mouth, to believe with your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and he died and resurrected for you. That's all that you need to do. And you are saved. 
you are brought to become like him. The rest he does for you. The transformation is done by the spirit of the living God. You don't have to go through it alone. The difference between you who is here, who is born again, and the one out there in the world. You are not doing this journey alone. You are not doing life alone. You have Jesus Christ. He said he's not going to leave us as orphans, but he's going to send us a helper who is the Holy Spirit. And he has already been sent. It's only for you to believe in him. It's only for you to accept him. You are here, you are born again, and you are yet to accept the helper. This is an opportunity for you once again, just to talk to God and tell him, Holy Spirit, you are the helper. You are the one that the Father sent. May you come into my life. Help me in the situation that I am in. Help me in the struggles that I'm going through. This is what the word of God is reminding us this morning. In part of the skit that we saw here, when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane, an angel was sent to encourage him and to strengthen him. That is our God. Even in your hard season, even in that tough moment, he sends a helper. He sends a helper. He sends a helper. And I would just request us to stand from wherever we are seated. And I just want to give you this time and this opportunity for you just to surrender yourself before the Lord. For you just to give yourself. Surrender before him. We have been reminded that in Christ alone our hope. In Christ alone, that's where our hope is. You need just to have your faith in Christ Jesus. You just need to have your focus and put your hope in him. He himself is the description of what love is. God is love. He's the description of what love is. And this day we have been reminded that we just need to give ourselves to him. We just need to believe in him. We just need to surrender in, to him. And just before we continue, maybe you are here and you are not born again. Maybe you are here, you have never confessed Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Just raise your hand from wherever you are and we are going to pray with you. Maybe you are here, you have never born again. You have never chosen to surrender your life to him. This is an opportunity for you. It doesn't take any manner of sacrifice. He already gave the sacrifice on the cross. You are here, you are not born again. This is an opportunity for you. For you to give your life to Jesus Christ. For you to give your life to him. Who says that it's only for you to just surrender. For you to believe in him. And you will be saved. Are you here and you are not born again? Are you here, you are not given your life to Jesus Christ. And you would want to give him your life. Just raise your hand from wherever you are and we are going to pray and believe with you. And maybe you are joining us online and you want to give your life to Jesus Christ. Just type it down there on the comment box. And we are going to reach out to you. And we are going to believe and pray together. And as you are gathered in the church, I just want you to surrender before the Lord. Surrender to him and tell him, Lord, you are reminding us today for us to have faith in you. You have reminded us this day of your sign of love and the much love that you had for us. Lord, we are choosing to surrender. We are choosing to submit. We are choosing to accept your love this day. We are grateful that you gave your son, Jesus Christ, on that cross. We are grateful that, Lord, you are reminding us that we are able to do, we are able to receive that which we desire in your word. For, Lord, it's by faith, it's by faith that the things that we hope for, it's by faith that the, the desires that you have had about your family, that they are going to be turned around. It's by faith and you having your hope in Jesus Christ that what, that which is hard and has been tough in your life, that God, Lord, is going to turn it around. Go before the Lord and take that step of faith and speak unto our Lord. Tell him, Lord Jesus, this desire that I have had, this cry that I have had, these things that I have desired and have looked up to you, this day I choose to declare them and to speak them. Do not be silent. Speak them out. Speak them out. Speak them out. He says in his word in John that but I know the desires that you have in your heart, in your heart. But I wait until you have asked. Until you have asked. In Matthew 7, 7, he says, Ask and you shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. That is your step, the first step of faith. Ask of him. Ask of him. 
Speak, open your mouth and speak unto the Lord that which you have desired, that which you have desired, him that died on the cross. This morning he's giving you that chance. He's giving you that chance. He dies so that we might be reconciled back to the Father. This is your opportunity for you to speak to the Father because the Son died. The Son gave himself. The Son opened that chapter and that door for us to turn to him. Go before the Lord and speak unto him. Go before the Lord and speak unto him. Go before the Lord and ask of him. Yes, Lord Jesus, you have surrendered this morning, Lord. You have reminded us of your love. You have reminded us of the sacrifice that you gave through your son, Jesus Christ. And we may be drawn back. We may be brought back to your love, King Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for that love. Thank you, Lord, for that love that you have shown us, King of all glory. Thank you for your saving power. Your name is Yeshua, our deliverer. Your name is Yeshua, you that has freed us from every chain. Your name is Yeshua, that is able, oh God, you break chains around our lives. You transform situations that are beyond us, oh God. We have our faith in you. We have our hope in you. We have our hope and our faith in you, Christ Jesus. We are surrendering our loved ones. We are surrendering our loved ones before thee, O God. The Lord, you may rescue them. Lord, our family members that are not born again, our husbands and our wives that are not born again, our siblings that are not born again, this day we are praying that they may experience the love that you showed unto us through Christ Jesus. Lord, let your love, O God, be experienced unto them this day, that they may know you as Yeshua, our deliverer. They may know you as Yeshua, the one who sets us free. They may know you as our God, that your name may be magnified, oh God, that your name may be magnified in our homes, that your name may be magnified in our families, that your name may be magnified in our nation, that your name may be magnified in accordance to your word, oh God, that your name is going to be exalted, King of all glory. This day, Lord, as we choose to make steps of faith, his power of salvation is in this place. That family member that you have desired for them to be born again. Go before the Lord and mention them by name. Mention them by name. That family member, that person, that soul that you have desired for them to be set free, for them to be saved. This is your opportunity. This is your chance. Go before the Lord and mention them by name. Call them to salvation. Call them to salvation. This is your first step of faith. Call them to salvation. Call them to salvation. Call them to salvation. Do not be silent. Call them to salvation. Call them to salvation. Speak salvation upon the family members that they are not born again. Speak salvation upon that husband. Speak salvation upon that wife. Speak, speak salvation upon that sister or that brother. The saving power of Christ Jesus in this place. Speak salvation. The love of Jesus Christ, the saving power of us, Lord Jesus, move upon our families, move upon our loved ones, oh God, this day. The Lord, they may be saved, they may be transformed, they may come to the knowledge of you, they may come to the truth of your word, they may be transformed, oh God, and live in accordance to your word, Lord. As your children have taken the step of faith, as your children have taken the step of faith to mention the names of the loved ones, oh God, let your saving power, Lord, move upon our families. Let your saving power through your son, Jesus Christ, move upon our loved ones, oh God, that your name is going to be exalted, that your name is going to be magnified, that your name is going to be exalted. For you are our Lord, you are our God, and there is none other like you. Thank you, King Jesus. Thank you, everlasting master. It is in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we do believe and pray. Amen, amen. Let's celebrate Jesus. Let's celebrate Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. We give all the glory to Jesus. Amen, amen. We may just have our seats for the next few minutes as we thank God for the opportunity that he has given us. And just before we continue, Let's celebrate our spiritual authority in the house. Let's celebrate our mom and our dad. They are in the house. And we give honor. And we give glory to God. Yes. As the Sunday school pastor, I just want to say thank you for each and every one of you. 
for you just choosing and taking this time to attend the service. We are so much honored and we are so much privileged to have you. It's a blessing. To the parents, we want to say thank you that you took your time, sent your children here Monday to Friday. Just that sacrifice, every penny, every coin that you invested in their lives, it is not in vain. That which they have learned in this place. As the word of God says, teach them in the ways of the Lord. As they have started here, that shall be their way. Even when they grow up and they try, Atawakijaribu could behave as if they are forgotten. Mm -mm. They will still remember that which has been planted in their lives. Amen? We are so much grateful. We want to say thank you to all parents. Thank you so much. May the Lord God bless you. God bless you. God bless you for just giving us that chance to be with your children. Can we celebrate the children once again? Because they have done such a great job. And we bless God for that. Yes. And at this moment... I just want to welcome our spiritual authority, our dad, to come and help us conclude the service. Let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate him. Let's honor the authority. Let's celebrate our dad. Let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate him until he comes. Tumpigie makofi mpaka afike hapa. Yes, he is the man of God. We are so much honored. We are so much grateful for the opportunity. And we once again want to appreciate. Thank you so much, dad as the Sunday School Department, for giving us the chance to, uh, the chance to minister. We are so much uh, honored. Thank you so much. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. My son just reminds me that they have not finished their part. So let them finish. I'll come back. Uh, they are doing the announcement. As the announcement here, Every baby dedication in the second Sunday of the month um, to release visitors to the visitors parlor for brief fellowship, the pastors, 12.44 to 12.45 p.m. to 1 to 101, two minutes. Con um, as we um, in the hours of incense, the service starts at 6 to 8 p.m. I am the fragment of knowledge service every Wednesday at 6.30 to 8 p.m. Um, global, global prophetic prayer hour on Facebook and YouTube every Wednesday and Friday. We pray for the nations and the needs of people, encouraging them to join. And the undignified praise book for sale, you can go and buy over there. That's the book my mom wrote. <laughs>